Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. It's Wednesday, October the 9th. The year's 2019. Let's talk trading. Choices, decisions, questions, answers. Yesterday, I was talking about putting it all together, your trading system. I thought maybe I should take a step back because there's so many choices and decisions and questions and answers that traders have to do on a regular recurring basis. Some decisions like what market am I going to trade, Forex, stocks, you might make that decision once and just stick with it. Then you might decide, well, which instrument within that am I going to trade? Am I going to trade like the euro yen? Am I going to trade the dollar yen or the euro dollar? I mean, that's a decision you have to make. And then you decide, am I going to be a swing trader? Am I going to be a intraday trader? And then you decide, am I going to be a green rat, a red rat, a Yale student? Which system am I going to trade? When am I going to take that entry? What session? I mean, there's just so many choices and you decide questions you have to answer. And the thing is, if you don't put these questions, say, down on a spreadsheet or on a piece, write them down on a piece of paper, you may forget to ask and answer one of those questions and it could lead to ruin. You know, you have yourself a checklist. And so many traders, you know, they ask about the money management side. When do I exit? When do I exit? When do I take profit? And that's why I say you have to create your own exit playbook. So you know, when you face a situation, you've already decided ahead of time, okay, if I'm up 10 pips and it moves back two, I'm going to exit. Something like that. Something as simple as that. And see, that way, in the moment, you don't get caught up in the emotion. You've already made your plan, and all you have to do is execute it. Now, of course, fellow traders, boys and girls, you all know these videos are for educational purposes only, and your results may differ from mine. And that trading, whether it's Forex or stocks, is very risky. And... You can lose all the money in your portfolio and then some. So, if you need financial advice, you should seek it from an accredited financial professional rather than somebody whose YouTube video you're watching or somebody who has some post on a forum or sent you an email. <laughs> Have you been looking at your email lately? You know, that's the one thing that I see, the big difference. There's so many guys just marketing stuff out there. And all I do is just supply content. I'm not marketing anything. And we've talked about risk and money management every day, right? We repeat that every day because it's that important. And we look at the risk and money management screen. Risk, as we define it, is the dollar amount or percent of your account that you're willing to lose per trade. So it could be $10 a trade, it could be $1 a trade, it could be 1% per tra trade. But whatever you decide, you just make sure you don't lose more than that amount on any given trade so you don't get wiped out. Okay, let's see, we're halfway through the week. We still have some of these pairs that haven't filled the gap. So there's still an opportunity just because it's Wednesday. Don't count those pairs out. We'll see what happens at the end of the week. And for the week, the dollar yen hasn't really done much since yesterday. I think it was a little bit below the pivot yesterday, and now it's uh, above the pivot there, the weekly pivot that is. And we're looking here at the daily. And you can see, oh, this is the Euro Yen. I guess I had switched up yesterday. 
Uh, dollar yen, 227 pips below that yearly open. And you can see we're down 70 pips for the month, but we're up 72 pips for the week. So let's just see what happens here. And we are looking at the euro yen again. And I, I, I will comment on it. So you can see here, this was the first day of the week, trading day of the week, which was Monday this week. And you see we broke out and we came right back into that range. And this is the first day of the month. And you see we came we're, we're within that. So there's two breakout opportunities that are going to present themselves. And here's one happening live. Does it get out of Monday's range right here? And we switch back over to the dollar yen. And you can see we're still within Monday's range. Yesterday's an inside bar. So far today's an inside bar. But heads up, we've got FOMC coming in just a few hours. Normally, I, I would put that on that one of the opening screens. That's the FOMC day. But I wanted to focus on the you know, the choices, decisions, questions, and answers. Oh, and just so you know, I did find a little bug in the dashboard over here. I uh, I messed up on the formula for calculating the yearly low, so I fixed that. I'll be sending that uh, updated dashboard out in the next batch, along with some of the new functions that I've added. Let's see, I, <laughs> I neglected to... Uh, update those so we'll move on once again showing the inside bar here and you can see there's still inside bar opportunities happening and for those of you who don't know what an inside bar is an inside bar is one where it, the bar is a lower high than the previous bar and a higher low than a previous bar that's an inside bar that means the price range is contracting and sooner or later it's going to have to expand and we look to see those breakouts sometimes those breakouts can be huge and today at the moment we only have four pairs over 100 pips in range perhaps the traders are waiting on the uh, FOMC announcement. And right here, dollar yen is uh, hitting the weekly H1 highest open and the daily H1 highest open right here. And it looks like it's pulling back five pips. And we've got enough range, we actually can have some rat zone trades. Pivot point was. Bet between the buy zone and sell zone. And so right here, there was really no bias. So if you took this trade, you see it just turned around. That would have been a scratch or just a, a couple pipper. And then price turned around, took out the pivot. No surprise there. It's only four pips from the open. Then you had a buy trigger, another buy trigger, another buy trigger and then price moved up from there. Red rats, get ready. And looking at the pivot, you can see we're 28 pips above the pivot at the moment and we're 14 pips above the future pivot point. We took out the pivot as we showed earlier, one missed pivot so far this month and one missed from last month. Price action. You can see here traders look like they're waiting for something not much movement but you can see here we stayed within between these two lines 
had to leave, we stayed within these two lines, had to leave, we stayed within these two lines, and we had to leave, and leave and return. We're in the upper wick zone, so we'll be looking to exit this probably with the FOMC announcement. Close to the previous day's high, looking for a breakout. On the tick, you can see, you know, probably moving about four pips, nothing to write home about. You can see here on the Einstein line, it's uh, price is just waffling. They're waiting. Looking at the all the different wick zones. You can see prices in that upper wick zone again. Looking at the range gauge, we're within the first trading day of the week here. You can see that we're close to the uh, weekly open plus half of the ATR 11. We're not, we're, we've also on the daily, we've got the daily open plus half of the ATR7. We've already exceeded that once. So remember, we're looking to hit probably the open plus half of the ATR ranges here. And fellow traders, just remember, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So everybody go out there and drain the banks.